This week's video has a little bit of everything. I'm gonna show you all the fun things that are growing in the garden. May in the garden is such a beautiful time. Lots of things ripening, lots of things growing. Uh, we've got a few garden harvests. We're gonna harvest potatoes, some onions, beans, lots of things like that. And we're gonna go into the kitchen, show you what I'm making with all of those things. Stay tuned to the end for a project that I'm so excited about. It's been in the works for a little while and I've been very patient waiting for it to be built. So you're gonna to wanna to see this. Stay tuned. I think you're gonna love it as much as I do. This little sweet pea patch is just still going so well. It's interplanted with a tomato. And I keep thinking the sweet peas are gonna die back, but this one just keeps cranking out the blooms, so no complaints from me. Hollyhocks, poppies, Larkspur, still grown strong. Don't tell these guys it's been a hundred every day. Something new I'm growing this year are these West Indian cucamelons. I'm not sure when to harvest them. I'm not sure how big they get. This is looking pretty big. Way bigger than a regular cucamelon, so I'm gonna have to try a couple, I guess, and see. I noticed a, kind of an infestation over here. One of my favorite things to use in the garden when I see kind of an overabundance of flying bugs that shouldn't be there. Like I just put up one of these um, yellow sticky traps. This is on Larkspur. Thank you, Larkspur. And it kind of lets me know what's going on, what kind of bugs they are. It kind of helps control them a little bit. Pomegranates are starting to set fruit. This is a black-eyed Susan vine that I threw seeds in a year or two ago and it just kind of hangs out right here. My artichoke patch had lots of problems with aphids, a huge infestation this year. So they've struggled a little bit. I'm letting the ones that come up just flower. It was a rough season for artichokes this year. know when an onion is ready to harvest. Basically the tops are gonna fall over. So you can see that several of the tops are starting to fall over in here. Once the the top falls down the basically the bulb is finished and then at that point you can pull it and then it's best to kind of let it cure in the garden for a couple of days so that's what I'm gonna do with some of these here. Some of these others that the tops aren't quite down, I'm just gonna let them fall down on their own. So this onion process will take probably a few days or you know, up to a, up to a few weeks. You can see these are, these are good and done. I was given a handful of Itoi onions at a master gardener class. And they looked dead, they looked shriveled, dried up. I thought, oh, these aren't really gonna grow. From that little shriveled handful of onions, hundreds and hundreds of Itoi onions have grown. I share these with gardeners every year. And I always save some to plant and you can see there's more than enough to share. I give these out at the at my garden classes and workshops and I share with other gardeners. One of my favorite uses for Etoy onions 
is as a companion plant. Here in Arizona, we plant each white onions in the fall, about an inch deep, about a foot apart. Once the tops start to die back, you'll know it's time to harvest, but really you can harvest the greens and onions anytime. So I use these throughout the winter. When they start to die back is when I make a big harvest of them. Then I let them cure outside for a few days, which is what I'm doing now. If you have a garden in the low desert of Arizona, add these to your garden. Save a few, share a few every year. Pretty soon we'll all have them growing in our garden. temperatures of spring and they looked amazing. They started to flower and then I noticed that they were starting to die back which is the first sign that it's almost time to harvest. The temperatures are really starting to heat up and I'm ready to get those potatoes out of the containers and into my kitchen. Oh, here we go. Looks pretty good. And the thing that I've noticed about new potatoes is you need to be really gentle with them. Those skins are super, super sensitive. So we're just gonna put those potatoes in the colander. So far, so good. I see some smaller ones on there that if we lived in a cooler climate, these would probably also develop, but I will take what we can get here. Once the potatoes are out and the bag is light enough to carry, I'm gonna use the handles on this bag and add mulch around my garden with this compost that I use to grow the potatoes. Once you've harvested the potatoes, it's really pretty simple. Let them cure outside for a few hours and then store them inside in a cool, dark place. My guess is they're not gonna last very long. We love these and they are so good. This time of year, it's basically try and find the right peaches before the birds do. I like to leave them on the tree until they're soft but it's always a race because it seems like the birds can find the soft ones before I can. So I just have to keep my eye on the peaches. And at some point we hit that critical mass where basically I need to harvest the peaches and let them ripen inside just a little bit more. The birds just go to town. Not a bad harvest. Got kumquat, zucchini, carrots, the first peaches, they are so good more red swan beans, and the potato harvest. It's so easy to make fresh, good food for your family when these are your options. This is a great time of year. this area tomorrow. I am so excited.
cucumelons are making their way. Tomatillos love to climb. You really need to give them some support because the branches are so brittle that they, when they sprawl, it's really easy to break off the branches. So I like to use these little clips to help the tomatillos climb. Cucumbers starting to climb up. They usually have tendrils that'll latch on. So that's good. Malabar spinach finding its way. That's what's happening in the garden this week. Thank you so much for watching. 